I can't imagine why anyone would ever want to quit our awesome game, but it's a feature users seem to demand. So we're going to create a quit option. We create an event handler object, and similar to the start event within the menu, we're going to handle the quit event here. When we receive it, we'll switch state back to the menu. The quit event is something we're going to need in both the play and menu states, so we're going to use our special global input.rb file in the inputs directory to handle it. It works the same as a specialized input mapping. We say in order to the name of the event and what keys we're going to press to generate it. So we press escape within our play state and then again within our menu state, but that doesn't produce a reaction. So let's go back and fix that. We handle the quit event within the play state, but not the menu state. So let's go ahead and add an event handler for that here as well. And we're going to quit out of the entire game when we receive it at the menu. Escape now exits the play state and the menu state. Every game needs a hero to play as. We're going to have a little animated dwarf character. So we create dwarf.rb within the game objects directory. That's going to hold our dwarf class. Like most other things, he just inherits from Gemini game object. And to give him the ability to animate, we'll specify that he has the animated image behavior. We'll also give him the timeable behavior, which lets us set time-based events. To specify the animation files to use, we call the animateAs method and pass it the symbol dwarf, which will tell it to load all the dwarf underscore whatever dot ping files from the play data directory. You can see them over there on the right. We tell an animated image how quickly to animate through its animation speed attribute. We'll just pick a value of 2 for now. And we'll give our dwarf the ability to move left and right by telling it to handle the move left and move right events. The move left event will be handled by the move left method and the move right event by the move right method. The handler method will receive a message object, which among other things communicates how long it's been since the last update. We use that to ensure movement is smoother between slower and faster computers. So to move left, we subtract from the dwarf's current x position, 
and we take an amount times how long it's been since the last update. Let's go ahead and make that movement speed a constant so that we can easily change it later. And then we tell the object that when it moves left, it should use the walking animation. We do that via the animate pulse method. And again, we pass it the delta to keep the rate of animation smooth. The move right method is just the same, except we're going to add to the dwarf's X position instead of subtracting from it. We start the game back up and look at our big empty field. We created a dwarf class, but we didn't create a dwarf object, so let's go back and fix that. We have a dwarf.rb within the game objects folder, and that means that anywhere we want to, we can call create and pass it the symbol dwarf and create a dwarf object. We do so within the load method for the play state, so that it's created at startup. We set its position to be midway across the screen. And three quarters of the way down. Let's start the game back up. Under the play state. And it bombs immediately. Why is that? Well, we told the dwarf to handle move left and move right events, but it looks like it doesn't know how. We need to give it the handles events behavior before we can use the handle event method. We start back up, and there's our dwarf in the center of the screen, but if you press left and right, there's no response. And that's because we created move left and move right methods without actually mapping keys to them. So let's create an input file for the play state. and specify that in order to generate the move left event, we hold the left key. Likewise, in order to move right, we hold the right key. Start the game back up and voila! Dwarf can move left and right. He's barely animating at all, though. We can fix that by resetting his animation speed to something higher. And here's our animation. 